Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushkinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about price discrimination. Right? So we're going to be defining price discrimination and we're going to be talking about different types of price discrimination. Now what exactly is price discrimination? Right? So I'm just going to write it as PD. What exactly is price discrimination? So this is a, this is a situation when the producer so this is the situation when the producer sells the exact same product. So he sells the exact same product to different consumers or to different customers at different prices. So it sells the exact same product to different consumers at different prices. Right? Now, you must be thinking, how is he able to sell that? You know, how is he able to convince different produce different consumers uh, to buy that particular product the same product I'm not even saying that there is a little bit difference in the product I'm saying the same exact same product at different prices uh, well let's say for example like uh, if you talk about uh, if, if you if you've seen that a child's ticket a child's ticket on an airplane costs less as compared to uh, an adult ticket so this is what I would say it's called a price discrimination, right? Let's suppose, for example, when you go watch a movie, a movie on the weekend is, on the weekend, it's expensive as compared to movie on any weekday. You know, the movie is price on any weekday. That means this is, again, price discrimination, right? So you, 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 you see a lot of price discrimination happening around you. Uh, in your day-to-day -day life, but you know you, you you do not observe it or even if you observe it You want to know that why is it so and why am I being charged higher or why am I being charged lower? Well, we're going to discuss all that but first of all, let's discuss the conditions required for price discrimination So we're going to be discussing the conditions which are necessary in the market so that the price discrimination can occur so that producer is able to discriminate so the first thing is that the first condition is that the market must be imperfect now what do you mean by market being imperfect that means that the producer has the power to set the price right so the producer has the power to set the price that means it should not be a perfect competition right uh, it should not be a perfect competition as you've seen the perfect competition videos you would know that that in under perfect competition the price is something which is determined by the industry right so the price is something which is determined by the demand and supply of the industry so you know the 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 firm has nothing to do with the price at all right so uh, that means the market is something which is imperfect when the markets are imperfect let's suppose i talk about monopoly or let's suppose i talk about oligopoly when these kind of markets exist then price discrimination is possible the second type of condition is that uh, the consumers must have different price elasticities of demand so the consumers must have different price elasticities of demand now what do you mean by that uh, that means that let's take for an example uh, let's take an example of a movie ticket so in a movie ticket in a movie ticket there are two types of consumers first are the students and then are the adults now what happens is that uh, students have a more elastic demand as compared to the adults because students are the ones which are very very price sensitive because they have less money as compared to adults to spend right so that means if the if the price increases even by a little the demand is going to reduce by a huge amount because even if you raise the price for late let's say by a dollar or two dollars the demand is going to reduce because this most of the students won't be able to afford or they'll think that the price is too expensive but as compared to adults the price is a little inelastic right so they don't care too much about a little bit increase in their price which means that you can charge higher to adults and you can charge lower to students right so this is something that you can do and this is something that you observe in your day-to-day -day life as well you get a lot of student discounts uh, when it comes to buying an Apple laptop right so that means yes so they are making it cheaper for the student market because it's price sensitive so consumers must have different price elasticity of demand because if they have different price elasticity of demand then you can charge 
different prices to the same type of consumers and as you know uh, in this in this world uh, everything is known you know you you can't say that uh, i'm charging less price to students i'm charging high price to adults and adults won't be able to know that students are the ones who are getting the same product at a lower price so they would know right so this is a world of uh, kind of almost a perfect knowledge system so yes so until unless the elasticities are not same you will not be able to until unless the elasticities are different uh, you will not be able to uh, you know charge higher right so the elasticity cities are supposed to be different all right uh, so there are different ways in which the producers can separate markets right so these so actually i've talked about the third condition this third condition as well the third condition is that the producers must be able to separate the consumers so producers must be able to differentiate must be able to differentiate the consumers right uh, that is something which is very very Im important because if they are not able to differentiate they will not be able to sell them right so uh, you know let's suppose over here the differentiation was i have i have cl classified my consumers as being students and i have classified my consumers as being adults so i'm able to differentiate between consumers and there are so many different ways in which you can so i'm just uh, you know uh, expanding part 3 in, in there are so many different ways in which you can differentiate a consumer right so let's suppose the first way the first way is the time now you can charge according to time let's suppose for example if you talk about the airplane tickets right so the airplane tickets are the ones which uh, which are more expensive if you book it at the last minute right so if you book it at the last minute the, the same ticket costs you more as compared to if you book it like one month prior or two months prior so that means you're differentiating consumers based on time, right? And again, movie tickets. Let's suppose anyone who is coming to watch the early 10 a.m. show is going to be charged less as compared to the 7 p.m. show. So again, what you're doing is you are differentiating consumers based on time. Now, another way you can differentiate consumers is by age, right? So that means, let's suppose, for example, uh, uh, if you talk about, again, if you talk about airplane tickets, there is a senior citizen discount right so there is a senior citizen discount so that means you are charging less based on age right so anyone above the age of 65 years is going to be charged less so this is differentiating on the basis of age then the next way you can differentiate is on the basis of gender so you can even uh, you know uh, differentiate consumers on the basis of gender Let's say, for example, there is this uh, there is this football club in Sweden which charges less, which charges a lower price for lower price for football tickets for females, right? Now, why does it charge lower price for females? Because females have an elastic demand for football tickets because they're not so interested in football. And when it comes to males. Uh, they're more interested in football and they have more inelastic demand that means males would go to a football match no matter what the price is and females on the other hand would be price sensitive in when it comes to football right generally i'm talking about right so let's talk about the next next way you can actually go ahead and uh, differentiate between consumers that is the geographical location right so geographical locations is the you know location is uh, it's it's actually very important. This is the kind of uh, a price discrimination that you see a lot. So due to transportation costs and everything, uh, there the prices in some countries are higher for a particular product. Let's suppose if if you talk about in Dubai, in Dubai if you buy electronics, they would be cheaper as compared to let's say any other place, let's say India, right? So that means that electronics are cheaper here as compared to here. So Samsung charges less here and more here right so that's just an example you know maybe it can be due to transportation costs let's suppose if you go to if you go to places where uh if you go to let's suppose you go to places like top hills right let's suppose you go to mountains and stuff so over there the food is going to be more expensive because of the transportation cost transportation costs involved right so geographical distance is something in which you can uh, you know differentiate between consumers the next the next way you can differentiate is the types of consumers right so you can differentiate uh, between types of consumers as well let's suppose if i talk about electricity 
uh, you have two types of consumers industrial consumers and you have residential consumers and the prices are different for industrial and residential consumers so you can differentiate your product so you can differentiate between consumers between the types of consumers as well so these three types of conditions must exist these three types of conditions must exist exist for price discrimination to occur right and these and the third condition is something that you know I've said in different ways you can actually go ahead and differentiate between consumers so uh, I suppose you're understanding this point over here guys so thank you very much for watching this video right in the next video we're going to be talking about the uh, the degrees of price discrimination right so go ahead and watch that so before before we go ahead guys don't forget to explore our website that is perfect-course.com our facebook page give us your valuable like and give us your valuable feedback on this email address so thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one